the Lord a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your hands and magnify hallelujah. him. Open your mouth and praise him. Hallelujah. Bless him. Praise him. Thank Glorify you, him. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. Lift your voices. Magnify him. Magnify, magnify his holy name. Let him hear your voice. Lift him up. Lift him higher. Yes, you are. Make it a personal declaration. voices and just worship him. Magnify him. Honor him. Honor him. Appreciate the Lord. Lift your voices. Let him hear your praise. says the servant of God will succeed. 
Why? Because God's power supports them and enables them to stand. Yes, Lord. The scripture says, let him that thinketh he stand. Take it. Lest he fall. That means it's possible to assume that you're successful or you're succeeding. It's possible to be thinking that you're standing. It's possible to think that you're achieving. And the Lord said when you begin to think that way, you have to make sure your thoughts are not empty. And you have to make sure that you're not thinking that the power that kept you last year is still sufficient to keep you going. It's like someone who decides to fly a jet without considering the fact that you will have to fuel the jet as you go. And now you have lots of distance to cover. But you concluded that since I fueled when I took up, took off, I don't need to fuel my jet. Yeah. I don't have to tell you what the outcome would be. Let him that thinks he has enough gas. It's not denying the fact that you are standing. He said, when you're, is he still holding you? And that's why Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Most times in the lives of people, as I started teaching last week, you know, Sunday, transitioning from existence to living. It's possible to live a long life only for you to check that life and realize that you merely existed. You haven't lived. It's possible to be 60 years old and if we check in reality how old you are if how old you are is measured by how well you have lived in accordance with your life's purpose, calling, or your contributions to life, you can be 60 years old and you have only lived for 16 years. Well, eight times. 60. How do you calculate that again? It, if you live eight hours, if you sleep eight hours every day, hours have you slept? 29. So if you multiply that by 60 years, huh? Say that loud. So more. Uh, calculate that with years. I want to know how many years is that? One seventy-five hours. So now convert that to years. How many hours do you have in a year? No, not not hours in a year. Convert that hours to years. Huh? You have that is 60 years now. You have how many hours? 100 and what? How many hours? 170 what? 175,000 
hours. Convert 175,000 hours to years. How many years is that? Welcome to school. Convert. Are you converting? So you are running almost about huh? Okay. No, so not I'm talking about the actual years if you convert that to years. So that's so you're correct now. You're running somewhere around 19 to 20 years. You understand? You got that, ma. All right, good. You're running about 19 to 20. You see, when we start saying things like this, right, some people don't like it. They like to dismiss it. I just want to hear the word of God. And this is the word of God. Do you understand? This is the word of God. You want to hear the word of God? The word of God in Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Let's look at the word of God in Joshua 13. Joshua 13. Everybody read loud and clear. Joshua, you are now an old man. You are growing old. He was how old here? 110. So God does count your age, your God takes into account the number of years you live. But what God actually record is how many of those years did you leave it making contributions to your generation? How many of those years did you live in accordance with his purpose and his plan for your life? See, I'm telling you the truth. If at this stage of your life, you are not obsessed with the fact that you're here to execute destiny, an exact assignment, you are insulting your creator. That's a fact. And it's not possible for the Holy Spirit to perfect the will of God in your life if you are not interested in that will. So what the Holy Spirit does is to bring your interest to align with God's interest. What matters the most to God? That's what the Holy Spirit begins to bring your mind to. You know, Jesus said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can walk. Believe you me, there is a life after this life. It is in that life that you actually know whether you lived or existed. On earth, here in this current life, maximum, maybe, 121, my grandmother lived, my great grandmother lived for 147, 140 something. My grandmother lived 110, 111. So, the oldest of the oldest, my 150, they are gone. When you come into the real life, now listen to me, this real life is a life you cannot change anything nothing. You cannot change anything. The only time you can change anything is here in time. When you cross to eternity, you cannot change anything. That's why in the life to come, we don't grow old. In the land where we never grow old, Never grow old, never in the land where 
you never Never, never grow old in a long way. Whenever grow old, never grow old, never grow old in a long way. You never. You never need Mary Kay. You never need extension hair. In the land where you never need eyelashes. Never need medication. You never need the Tylenol. In the land where you never grow old. Never backache. Never pay rent. In the land where you don't owe mortgage. No need for credit card. No need to walk eight to five. In a land where you never suffer. What Satan likes to do is to blind your mind even as a child of God and convince you that life it's all about the life here. But existence is eternity. Not to think about it makes you, not you, makes them fools. You're a fool to buy a house and not know what that house looked like. And you say, I'm going to move him to that house without thinking about every other nitty gritty of the house. The Holy Spirit asked me to just bring this to your consciousness. As wonderful as life is here in time, you can only correct things while you are in time. How much offering or tithe can you give God in eternity? Nothing. He doesn't need it. How much praise and worship you know we're created to worship God. That's a lie. That's not, that's not you know, you have believed, many people have believed the lie. If God needs worship that means the day you die he will stop being worshipped. That's a fact. That means the time that the whole world turned against God, he only had one man, Noah, and his wife, and his two and a half children, three kids, and their wives. One of the sons was possessed with that evil spirit of sodomy. So, that means when the whole world turned against God, God should cease from being God. Because people say, God feeds on your worship. Clap for yourself, good chef. You know how to cook the worship. The kind of worship that you sing songs of praise only when you're happy. So God is now relegated or reduced to your mood. Do you understand? If you leave Hasif, you're not going to exit this earth. I'm sorry. You're not leaving. You're the worst fool. That's what the scripture says. If our hope is in this world alone, we are of all men the most miserable.
if the only benefit of our hope in Christ is limited to this life on earth, we deserve to be pitied more than all others. Deserve to be pitied. Message translation. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Shall I go on empty hand? Shall I meet my Savior thus? Not a soul with which to greet him. Shall I empty hand and go? Many people are aging, only few are growing. Age is a matter of number. Growth is a matter of effectiveness, functionality, functioning, advertising Jesus, and announcing Jesus to your world. Revealing Jesus to your world. And you're not just revealing Jesus, becoming a magnet for souls. Your life becoming God's invitation to men to come to him. Your success your triumph, your victory. That's why you don't represent God well if you're defeated, always defeated. If everything keeps going against you. Well, remember Job. No, think about Job. At the end of the day, the entire case of Job lasted nine months. At the end of the day, God turned his story around for his glory. There are some of you, your situation is not advertising God's glory. And that's why you must insist asking God. Asking God by his mercy, by his power, for his glory to cause your life to advertise him in a unique way. God, believe you me, if you make that prayer a sincere prayer, you will be shocked. You'll be shocked how God will move in your favor. You'll be shocked how God will move things around. You'll be shocked how God will not come to your rescue, but will come to you as a porter comes to the clay. What about your life can God use? If all we get out of Christ is, the, is a little inspiration for a few short years, we are a pretty sorry what? Lot. But the truth is that Christ has been raised up. The first in a long legacy of those who are worth going to leave their cemetery. So you're going to leave your body when you get it, when you exit this earth. You're going to have a new body. And so, God is saying that the servant of God will succeed because God, God's power supports them and enables them to stand. Is it possible that somebody thinks he's standing, but in the eyes of God, you're not standing? You have lived for how many years? 60 years. And they told you to sleep eight hours a day, and you spent eight hours sleeping. Now, not to talk of the naps, and the parties, and the careless moments, and the foolish things, and the mistakes. Just sleep alone. You sleep eight hours. When you turn 60, you have been sleeping for 20 years. That means you only opened your eyes for 40 years, even though you have lived 60 years. Many spend their time preparing for life on earth. They go to good schools. 
They spend money. They take loans. Do everything to get very good education. To prepare for a good future. Which is highly commendable. But very few invest time preparing for eternity. Where you will live forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. The Lord Jesus is not coming someday. I can promise you he's coming sooner than you thought. So God wants you to succeed. And for most people the power that enables them to succeed is weak, getting weaker and weaker. And sometimes you know that the power that is helping you succeed is weak. When there is suddenly a switch in your interests, you notice you used to be interested in used to be, thank you, interested in Jesus Christ. Now, you're interested more in certain things that Satan has replaced, has used in replacing Christ. So when you begin to think of the fact that someday you will exit I was watching a finance uh, show today because I, since God called me to bring wealth to the body of Christ, I have to know what is going on. And the question is in the fact that everyone is selling off stuff and they are buying gold. So gold is rising. Bitcoin is still still struggling. But whether you know it or not, uh, the world power, the new world order will not use gold as a currency. Rather, they will use cryptocurrency. That's generally what will happen. So, one of the experts said, even the government know that has its hands right now. There's nobody with 401k, IRA, any of those investments that have up to half what is on the paper. Do you understand? The Lord showed me, I told you what is coming 2024. I'm telling you, if we don't pray, which we are already praying, we prayed, right? If you are not... <laughs> I'm telling you that Iran is about to attack North America. Now it's in the news. But I broke the news of the things coming. But that's not the only thing. The civil war that is, is up, things are about to escalate. And that's why it's not for you and I to be afraid. But we will be naive to think we are standing. When we're about to fall. It's better to know that. I need power to support me. Than to assume. I have power. Until you are tested. Then you're grounded to powder. The things that are coming to the nation. Is too unbelievable. It's too unbelievable. It's too unbelievable. But God enables us to stand. And so in the year of shining forth, the Lord spoke to us earlier. He said, 
Why will we need light? Because the darkness will intensify. Why do you need to shine? Because of the intensity of darkness. A person who takes time to think is not stupid. As a matter of fact, the Bible says a prudent man foresees evil and even though the King James says he hides himself but in the original Hebrew when a wise man a prudent man with insight foresees danger coming and what does he do? He can you help me? He what? So the King James says he hide but in that word hide in the Hebrew, it's not like the man running to go and hide. No, it's that a man sees that disaster is coming, so he builds something that helps him stay safe. You understand? So he's not afraid of the disaster that comes. So a prudent man with insight foresees danger coming. And what does he do? He he what? He prepares himself for it. Go ahead. Help me read. One, two, go. But who? A senseless. But the senseless. But the senseless. In other words, the foolish, the stupid. The one who doesn't take time to think. The one who dismisses reality. Like the snail. Play that video I sent you. Like the snail. Move it slightly forward to remove the W something something. You understand? The one from the The snail is in a shell and it can be walking around, crawling around until the snail begins to think that there's someone, there's danger. When a snail senses danger, what does the snail do? He runs back into its shell. And you know what the snail says to itself? If no one, if I'm not seeing you, it means you are not seeing me. Now if he does that in Africa, he's end up, yes, he ends up in the pot of soup. Nicely served. It tastes good. Lots of iron. Nourishment. Nutrition, foolishness, cost it, it life. Don't ever dismiss reality simply because it is uncomfortable. Do you understand? Don't think that because you are big, please watch this thing. Watch this. Don't think because you're big and you're strong, you got it. Mm -mm. the senseless rush blindly forward I'm going forward I'm shining forth and suffer the consequences whatever is coming that is about to hurt people that which will ruin things, that which will cause tears by the mercies and power of God. Because God is preparing you for what is coming. You will never be a victim. You will never suffer consequences in the name of Jesus. I'm going to go quick. I'm already sharing with you then. I'll just open up what I want to teach. Uh, and, but I want you to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray and ask God. Because we're in a season of transition. I want to ask God to help you. To give you more power. Yes. Are you following me? Yes, now when you say, Lord, give me more power. It's not as if he goes to manufacture power. He begins to increase your capacity. And begin to infuse you with more revelation of him. Yes. During the night vigil, I was, sharing, I was teaching them about the power of understanding. And I taught them understanding. And guess what? When my sister father was teaching in the service today, understanding. Amen. Understanding. So I was telling them, I said, you see? Oh, and one of us said, oh, 
You are so connected to the spirit of your father. I said, no, no, that's not connected to the spirit of my father, right? It is what is on the table, the dining table of God. Any man of God that is connected to God and dies from God's table, know this is exactly what the heart of God is right now. So, my father feasted from the table. I feasted from the table. The advantage for me is that I preached it before he preached it. And the greater advantage is that he didn't hear my service. So that just tells you that we are feasting from the same divine table. Please, go ahead, read that. Blue. Oh. Oh, do you have it? Please. I want you to look and see. What the volume? This is. Is that volume? Okay. This is a very tiny what? What kind of fish is this? Electric. Electric air. You understand? Tiny. Pause a little bit. Tiny. Tiny. Pause. Pause. Tiny. Electric. Let him that think it's his time. When you think you have power, you have to be sure you really have power. Because your definition of power, power is not just ability to get things done. No. <laughs> ability to get things done without becoming a victim of what? Counterattacks. Because there is no way that you deploy the power of God in a dark situation that darkness will not attack you. It's not possible. So darkness can attack people in such a way that a person will spend their entire life fighting counterattacks than fulfilling destiny. That doesn't make you successful, sir. That's the recipe for failure. That you attend class and you repeat the same class to an university and you are on your, your first year and you are in that university for 10 years and you keep failing the same class and you couldn't go to the next year, next class because of failure. Does that make you a success? You can be in the university for 30 years. Of course, they won't even keep you there. After a certain time, they say, mm, we are tired of you, please. Pack your load and go. <laughs> Do you understand? They, they, they get tired. Nobody will be tired of you. Because you're a high flyer. You're a success story. Shout a loud amen. So, so pay attention. Pay attention. This fish probably weighs give and take. Give and take five pounds. But it has something inside of itself. The alligator, on the other hand, probably weighs maybe an average alligator weighs about how many? 300 pounds. It has teeth, it has mouth. But it lacks power. Are you listening? Tap your neighbor and say, are you watching? Say, you can't watch this sitting down. You can't watch. No, stand, stand, neighbor. You sit. Stand. Say, touch your neighbor. You can't watch it. I say, neighbor, I need you to be sensitive. I taught them some very powerful principles and some of the things, some deeper principles makes a person ineffective. And I talked about pride. You'll be so shocked. We went deep in the, in the night vision. So please pay attention. This thing is tiny. This thing is big. This fish doesn't have teeth. 
that can literally eat meat like that. Although it eats some fishes and insects and other things in the Blue Sea. Uh, but the ghetto can grab an entire antelope, leopard, lion, can eat, can crush, crush anything with his teeth. But they didn't understand the principle of power. Let him that think at his stand take it, lest he gets electrocuted. If you are not properly prepared for what is coming, sir, you will be shocked. Oh, you will be shocked. The Bible tells us that even when the Antichrist come, even when the Antichrist come, he said, if case not taken, even the very elect will be deceived. Very elect. How can someone be very elect? Not the elect. Very elect and still be deceived. God's justice system forbid that he allows you to face an exam or a test without proper preparation. He will use everything to prepare you for what is coming so that no man is excusable. Do you understand? Now, in your case, you might be properly prepared, but I want to tell you that what God considers proper preparation is in your ability to not just stand up, stand strong, stand bold, but in your ability to translate your relationship into a tool of evangelism, soul winning, that somebody will look at you and say, you mean you were thrown into the fire and the fire could not burn you. I want to serve your God. Not that you come out of the fire and say, well, you know, I've been training. In fact, my father was a firefighter. My great-grandfather, my great-grandmother was a firefighter. So my family, we have firefighting gene. So when God can't trace glory coming from you, streaming from you, God just look at you and he relegates you. But God looks at somebody and say, ah, this son and this daughter of mine, you are so unique because with every little opportunity I give to you, you are advertising my glory. The time is coming. If you do not have power to stand, he said, with a soldier fall, you can, when you fall, you can get mad and get angry. Oh, nobody's paying attention to me. The Bible says the order, keep right on marching. When you fall upon the sword, you should not be injured. You should not be wounded. But do you have that power? Do you have that thing that forbids you from being wounded? Do you have that thing that enables you to represent God to full capacity? You do have the Holy Spirit, right? And if you don't, you will. But here's what I'm telling you. Whatever is coming, you will overcome. Your amen is not strong enough. You will overcome. You will overcome. In the name of Jesus. So look at that. So now, the alligator thought, I have found food. Ha! Open door. Opportunity. And then when the thing was trying to swim out, he said, no, I'm not going to let this go. Ha! Uh, a senseless alligator. He foresaw evil, but did not discern it. Naturally, fishes like this don't come outside. They are always down in the deep. These ones, especially these uh, kind of fish, they like to go and hide inside wood, stones, underground. And believe you me, the same way when you see a dog and say, this is a dog, and the dog see a human and say, this is human. You see a cat, you say this is cat. Cat sees a dog, you say this is dog. Dog says this is human. In the aquatic world, there is intelligence. That is why hardly will you see um, a, 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 an octopus 
going to kill another octopus for food. Do you understand? An octopus will kill another fish for food. Octopus like crab. So they know how to squeeze crab and suck life out of crabs. So they are very intelligent. Do you understand? So in the aquatic world, there is intelligence. That's why when sharks are looking for food, they know where to swim to. They understand the migrations of, of fishes, sardines and other species. They know what time of the year to go to where to find what. So the alligator looking at this from afar already knew. So the first thing is that this kind of fishes, they don't come out. So he now felt like, oh, this is breakthrough. <laughs> Open door. Senseless man. He saw evil. He should have said, hmm, let me just leave this thing. Let me look for something better. But he was too hungry. There was no prudence. He foresaw evil and he senselessly walked into it. I'm bringing you a prophetic message. If you have not sharpened your spiritual discernment or your spiritual senses, I beg you, this is the time to do it. So, so we have power night coming up on Friday. No matter what, please don't miss it. Because during that Friday power night, we're going to deal with a couple of things. And, and since you have your own life, as you go home tonight, probably somewhere around 11, 11, 30, 12, spend some time, especially between 5 minutes to 12 and 12, 30, praying in tongues. Pray in the spirit if you feel the Holy Ghost. What will I be praying? Just pray, God, sharpen my sensitivity. Make me spiritually sensitive. Sharpen my spiritual sensitivity. Sharpen my submission to the Holy Spirit. And sharpen my obedience to God. That is, let my obedience not be something I negotiate. Sharp! God says, ah! I say, yeah. Because the Antichrist will come and attack and deceive many. We are not supposed to be here in his days. But whether you know it or not, Satan likes to hasten the time. He likes to change time and season. I've already talked to you about that. That he seeks to change the times and the seasons. He doesn't know the exact timings of God for your life. But he will do everything to change the time. Now, I'd like you to watch. And then we take our prayers quickly. So, rewind it a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, right there. So now, he thought, I have caught a breakthrough. That thing looks tiny. This one looks heavy. Go ahead. Look at, are you, can you see? So now the crocodile caught it. Now, look at, look at the vibration. Look at the vibration. The, the one biting is the one dying. Look at, look at. Watch and see. Watch. See? Look, look. Who died? Look. Gente, é incrível a natureza. O jacaré sendo ele é trocutado, o jacaré sendo ele é trocutado. Ô, oh, corre aqui! Rápido! Corre aqui! The mighty crocodile! Assiste aqui, vem ver! That rapidão. beat the fish! Corre aqui, moço, vem ver! Died! Because this fish has ability to release over 1,000 megawatts of power, electric power, when it feels threatened. Oh, 
Oh no, you thought I'm talking to the fish. I'm speaking to the crocodile of this nation. Anyone that thinks you are harmless, no, you missed it. They may look at you and think you are small and think you are tiny and think you are harmless and the crocodiles might think they have found food. God has a surprise for them because when any demonic satanic crocodile comes near you, they must have signed their death warrant because the days are here. We are in the days of power. Say the days of power. Say the days of glory. Say the days of power. That any crocodile that seeks to bite you, they will be what? Electrocuted. Somebody said electrocuted. You have to understand. That's why small boys like us don't mess with us. No, don't mess with us. Don't mess with us because you think, oh, what are they saying? What are they saying? That's why we are still here. Consult all the powers that have tried us. All the powers. Look at it. So any devil that want to die like this, let them try you. I say, let them try you. Let them try you. They will be electrocuted. They will be electrocuted. Somebody shout, yes. Although it's a warning for you not to assume you have power because you are a crocodile. That you are a crocodile doesn't mean you have power. That you are big doesn't mean you have power. That you are connected doesn't mean you have power. That you have teeth doesn't mean you have power. With all your teeth, we don't have to bite you. You bite us, you die. We bite you, you die. Either way it goes, you die. If you try us, you die. Either way. Look at that. I'm sure he told himself, today I'm going to have a nice, delicious meat is steak. Fish is fist. <laughs> nice, delicious fish meal. Uh, not knowing that he has signed a death warrant. The servant of God will succeed. Why? God's power. Say God's power. Say God's power. Say God's power. God's power supports them. That means that which seeks to attack you will fail. I gave them a scripture during the night. He said, the righteous man may fall. He said, you wicked man, stop trying to trip the righteous man. Because even if the righteous man falls seven times, he keeps right on rising. You're going to ask God for power. Put that scripture. You're going to ask God for power. Ask God for power. Oh, I told myself I won't go beyond 10 o'clock today. So I'll try to see. I'll try to see. But you're going to take two, three minutes. Personally, ask God for power. I hope this illustration makes sense to you. Okay. So if you don't have power, alligators will eat you. They will eat you. They will eat you. Somebody is eyeing your business. Somebody is eyeing your destiny. Somebody is eyeing your something. You are in the same environment. You are in the same water. And the water is dirty. And all they do is when they look at you, they keep thinking that you are the food that they are about to eat. Somebody! Now, I saw in that um, finance podcast today, powerful, powerful podcast. I, I don't miss that. I always follow them. Now, some of these heavy millionaires were talking. And they said, even the government know that everyone with anything, pension, IRA, uh, 401k, all those things, say they know that whatever you have there is not up to half again. It's not up to half. So everyone is pulling out of paper money into gold. Right? Or into crypto. Crypto is risky, right? But they're pulling into gold. So now, at the end of the day, you see that people have labored and have worked. And they think they have money. On 
money for them to go and pull out money. Because now, if they stop the inflation, the economy will crash. So inflation is another system of keeping the economy running. So now America is in over uh, one point something trillion dollars Americans debt or credit card because they don't have the money yet they are spending the money. So everything seems to be going wrong but God has a plan. I said God has a plan. That's why you have to understand. When everything dried up in what? In the land of Philistine. Isaac was going to go. God said stay. And when Isaac obeyed God. That's why you must learn to obey. When he obeyed God and he stayed. The Bible says right there and then. That for Isaac. God made him a hundred times. That year Isaac's crops were tremendous. One hundred times the grain he sowed. So watch out everyone that has been a kingdom sower. Sowing your time, your prayer, your love, your zeal, your commitment, your finances. Sowing your energy into God's kingdom. I promise you, you're not going to have a hundred times. You're going to have a thousand times. Why? Because when there is inflation, you need to have more than enough to sustain you. Put that scripture, Proverbs. He said, righteous man. He said, everybody read that. For the lovers of God may suffer adversity and stumble seven times. But everybody help me read. But they will continue. Say, I will continue. To rise how? Over and over again. But the unrighteous are what? Brought down by just how many? One calamity. And will never be able. Ability to stand. Comes from the power of Jehovah. I don't want you to take that for granted. I don't want you to take that for granted. I'm telling you, beloved. One fever, one fever is enough to wipe a person. One headache, one backache, one sudden satanic ailment. Satan can make one move. And the Bible says the person will never be able to rise again. But not against the righteous. Well, who is the righteous? The one who is, right, who is standing right with God. I want you to pray. It is not righteousness. If righteousness is doing the will of God, the way of God, right standing with God, you're going to cry out to God. Prayer is one of the responsibilities of the righteous. As a righteous, your prayer life becomes a tunnel through which God releases his power that supports you in the days of adversity. And I'm telling you, if you it is evil for you to think and say, well, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm just going to die anyway. One day somebody will die. It does matter. It is wickedness for you to think that living an unsuccessful life in time is okay. No. It is wickedness because your success is meant to open doors for many other people's success. For you to ignore it makes you a wicked person. So when you die here and cross to the other side, suddenly you will stand before your maker and God will let you know this is how you are going to live for the rest of your life. And just so you know, God is so loving. That's why he created hellfire. Don't let anybody tell you that God is loving. He cannot create hellfire. But for the righteous, God is so loving. That's why he created a reward system. God will never let me go the extra mile to spend and be spent and then to him. No. Every man 
His reward, follow him according to his work. According to your own work. So if you don't receive power from God to walk your work in time, when we cross over to eternity, you're going to be someone else's servant. Just so you know, we're not going to live in heaven. We're going to be in heaven for a thousand years. We're coming back to live on earth according to scripture. Because Jesus is not going to be reigning in heaven. The Father God is reigning in heaven. Jesus will reign here on earth. A new earth. A new earth. A new earth. And every one of us, every one of us that have lived for Jesus Christ will now be rewarded by Jesus Christ. Behold, I'm coming quickly. I bring my reward with me to repay everyone according to their works. Not according to my work. Every time God gives you an opportunity to be a part of another man's work, you know what God is saying to you? He's saying to you, I see your work. Your work is not solid enough. Now, be a part of another man's work to add to your work. Now, if your work is getting solid, then God now multiply your own work. Do you understand? He multiplies your own work. Being a part of my spiritual father's crusade, all of a sudden, God has multiplied my own. Our pastor sent me a message saying, Daddy, to show you how serious people are and eager, this crusade we're going to have in Jaws now. They just created a group chat uh, for pastors alone. Because we're going to also launch a pastor's network. They just created a group chat for pastors alone. Beside all the people that are registering. For pastors alone. I can't even remember how many, what, what account is out of my phone to see. But the number of pastors that have registered to be in the crusade. I say, wow. Exactly as I'm being a part of my father's work. My father is making others be a part of my work. This kingdom of God is so powerful. Are you following me? And that's why I vowed. Now my father is going to come in to North America again. He's going to be in Canada in June. I will be there. He's going to be in uh, uh, Houston in July. I'll be there. He's going to be in Costa Rica. I will be in Costa Rica. I'm going. It may not make sense. But you see, the woman of God that God used to give me the award when I went, she was talking about how she has traveled to here and there. She will, use, she will go to Katrin Kuma's meeting. No wonder she lasted this long. She will go to this meeting. She will go to Katrin Kuma's meeting. She went for this. She was just serving. And in her old age, when she can't even preach like she used to preach in those days, she hey, hiya, pee, cha, pee, pee. tiny but mighty. You can't jump into that power in old age by mistake. It's something you have grown and sustained. Ha, ah, my dearly beloved, I want you to understand that. Crocodiles are out there waiting to eat you. If you don't have the power of God, you will be their meal. But if you carry that power, anything that confronts you, attack you, will pay dearly for it. But the power is not just to kill the crocodiles, which of course are all symbols of demonic things, satanic things, and witchcraft, and water spirits, and all of that. But the power is to advertise God's kingdom and bring men into God's kingdom. He said, if you're a lover of God, no matter the adversity you face, you will stand because God's power supports you and enables you to stand. Question, how do I connect to that power? But I want you to pray. I want to take two minutes to cry out to God. Oh Lord, by your mercies, by your power. Empower me with the fullness of your power that will enable me to stand 
throughout this season, especially the second quarter of this year. The second quarter matters. Especially the second quarter of this year. If you are ready to pray, God is ready to answer. Hold me. So grant me your power to stand. He said, God's servants will succeed. He said, and God's servants will succeed. Say, I will succeed. Say, I will succeed. You must read the scripture to yourself. I am God's servant. I will succeed. God said to Joshua, you are old. You are growing old. We didn't read the other part, but the other part says, and there remained much land to be taken. The thing I promised the people have not been done. The assignment I entrusted to you has not been done. You are, and it's not a success story. The Bible says from that time, there arose a generation that knew not God. Success without a successor is failure. That's why the Lord keeps saying to me, son, you are successful. And every time I look at the success, he says to me, he said, the way you measure success is by the strength of those of people you are raising. The caliber of men and women you are raising. No matter what he said, look at it. Say, among your sons and daughters, you will watch me use them. Even the least among them will be doing things that a thousand people cannot do. Do you understand? He said the least among you will be a thousand Isaiah. The least Isaiah 60 among us will be a thousand. So God is saying that the least among us, that is if someone is weak in this church, that person will do what a thousand people cannot do. Somebody said that's me. But then he said the ones that are strong among us are equal to a nation. Are you following that? The smallest family shall multiply into a clan. Can you put that in the amplifier? The smallest family shall multiply into a clan. So the lowest, the least among us will multiply. The smallest one will become what? A thousand, which is a clan. And the least one, a mighty nation. I, the Lord, will quicken it in a appointed time. Say, this is the appointed time. This is the appointed time. Can you convince yourself this is the appointed time? I am God's servant. I will succeed. He said in Zechariah, he said, he that is weak or feeble among you will be like the house of David. Now what is the feebleness of the house of David? He fought 65 battles. He did not lose even one. God said, if you are weak, you will be like David. What is weakness of David? He never lost a single battle. But he said, those of you that are stronger like David, you will be like God. In that day, the Lord will defend the people of North America and Church of Fire International. And the one who is impaired among them in that day of persecution will become strong and noble like David and the house of David will be like God like the angel of the Lord who is before them listen let me tell you God is saying like I come here if you are as strong as David he said your strength will not diminish it will multiply and you will look like God are you following me? If you are impaired, if you are weak in our days, you will be as weak as David. So either way things go, if you are a lover of God, sensitive to the spirit of God, obey to the spirit of God, burning with fire for God, making up your mind that nothing can slow you, stop you, or make you ignore what God is doing. Then God is saying, get ready. Because in your weakness, he is merciful. In your weakness, you become as powerful as the house of David. And in your strength, you become as powerful as God. Either way life goes, you are not expected to fail. The servant of God will succeed God's power enables, supports them and enables them to stand. Lift your two hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
can I hear your voice loud and clear Father in the name of Jesus by your mercies by your power by your authority I ask for fresh baptism of your power oh Lord enable me empower me to succeed in the name of Jesus oh Lord I am your servant and your word says your servant will succeed because of your power so Lord I ask for power to succeed your power to support me your power to sustain me your power to preserve me your power to energize me your power to help me advertise God I ask for power to succeed oh Lord help me stand to stand strong to stand long for your glory in the name of Jesus open your mouth and make it your prayer you can sit down and pray if you want to pray open your mouth and pray the servant of God will succeed The power of God to succeed. I ask and I receive.
said to me, the church is in a transition. My people are in a transition. And transitions, seasons of transitions are very sensitive. If things go wrong during transition, they are very, it's very, very wrong for things to go wrong. So, if God's power so That means the same power supports you to reverse contradictions in your family. Do you understand? I want you to notice that one of the major way that God will lift people in this last days is through family. Family meaning, yes, church family, your biological family. And when I say family, it also means that it is one of the major ways Satan will attack and defeat people. Now when we talk about family, thank God for the nuclear family, but that's not the only thing that God calls a family. Family in this context for you and I, among several things, is anyone, any man, any woman, whose life was tied to your life from eternity. Whether you know it or not, there are people whose life God attached to your life. So, he told Abraham, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. There are people whose lives, again, your biological family, your brothers, your sisters, your sons especially, your daughters especially, your grandchildren. So, if Satan wants to corrupt your family and he feels like he can't get you, he will attack your grandchildren. Oh, I don't have any child. How much more grandchildren? Excuse me, my dear. You have no idea. He will attack anyone who in God's book is your spiritual responsibility. So, God is constantly encouraging his people to protect legacy. Legacy. Your children, your grandchildren, they are Satan's target. But Jesus is committed to ensuring that your children don't become tools in the hands of Satan. 
But if you ignore the fact that it is your fight, <laughs> Abraham died long ago. Today, we have Israel. We have what? Israel, by the way, if you want to call Israel by the original name, what do you call Israel? Jacob, right? So, so the nation Israel is simply what? Jacob. Just so you know, Abraham had other sons. Abraham had other grandchildren. Abraham had plenty of children and grandchildren. Ishmael was his first biological child. As soon as, before Ishmael was born, a wild spirit took over Ishmael. A wild spirit. God who can deliver everyone told the mother of Ishmael, he will be a wild donkey. A wild donkey. But I will bless him because it's Abraham's seed. So imagine God said, this one is doomed for destruction. But because he is Abraham's seed, I will give him power to enjoy life before he is destroyed. No matter how hard a Muslim tries, nobody who practices Islam can go to heaven. It's not possible because there is no other way that God has permitted through which a man can be saved except through Jesus Christ. So, Islam, whether Islam, there's nothing like Islam. That's just a bunch of confusion. Understand? Islam believe there is Jesus, but they believe he was a prophet. They don't believe he's a son of God. A prophet of God. Until they read deep into their Quran, they will say, well, we agree. He's the son of God, but he's not the son of God. You can hit your head on the ground until your, your forehead look like stone. That's not equal to what? Eternity with God. There's only one way through which a man can be saved. There is salvation in no one else. Under all heaven, Acts 4, 12, there is no other name for men to call upon to save them except what? The name of Jesus. Yet, Ishmael, Islam is a son of who? Abraham. As soon as Esau came as the firstborn before Esau came, have you not noticed that these children of Abraham were attacked in their mother's womb? Those of you that don't have children yet, if you intend to have children, you must sanctify your womb at all times, rejecting any form of infiltration. You may think it doesn't matter. It matters. Hitler was a woman's son. And you know Hitler is probably going to be next to Satan. Even those Euphrates River, those Euphrates River demons, they will be far from Hitler. Yeah. Hitler will be next to Satan. In fact, Satan will be afraid of Hitler. If you're going to do business, sanctify your business. Sanctify your ministry. Sanctify your calling, oh God, by the blood of Jesus. Flush out of my calling any and every interference of foul spirits, evil spirits, the spirit that will pervert my assignment and turn my assignment into 
towards a, a channel that sponsors Satan's kingdom. Lord, let the blood of Jesus sanctify my assignment. You sanctify yourself. Esau was in his mother's womb. God said, I hate Esau. Why? The child that has not committed anything until for you to look and then you discover that in actual reality, although we all came from God, we're all given certain choices and many people picked their soul and their pattern right from their mother's womb. But I didn't know what I was doing. It no, you, you know. It's just that you didn't know that you know. Do you understand? So the Bible said, "Let him that has stole steal no more." So perhaps you came out of your mother's womb with something wrong. What should you do? You cancel that wrong thing and change it. That's why Jacob, when he came out, he was a fighter good person, but the mother misread things and called him Jacob. But when he met with God, God said, your name will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be called Israel. And so now that your name is called Israel, you are a prince, you have power with God and you have prevailed. So from that day, we have of all the children of Abraham, we have one of them who is standing strong. Now, the sons of Ishmael are there. You can see them all over the place. Most of the Arabs. So what does God do with such people? He brings salvation to them. Because there are many Jewish people that are not saved. And the church does not replace the Jew. Don't follow that line. The church, there is nothing like replacement theology. The church does not replace Jews. The church is a benefactor of what the Jews. For salvation is of the Jews. So if you hate Jewish people, you have cost your own salvation. Because people will go with propaganda. Oh, oh they follow the, the lies of murderers. So don't cause the Jews. Salvation is of the Jew. It wasn't a preacher that said it. It was Jesus who said it. John chapter 4. Salvation is of the Jews. So every one of us are mere benefactor of the mercies God showed to the Jews. So God will not replace the Jews with us. He's not that stupid. No matter how much he loves us, we are not the replacement of the Jews. And all the things that is happening for, to us now is just for what? A season. For salvation is of the Jews. Jesus said that, John 4, 22. So it's for a season. And the time comes where the Bible says, all Jews, all Israel will be saved. Because God will open their eyes to see. That's not what I'm teaching right now. But what I'm trying to bring to your attention is that a transition is taking place. And God is constantly crafting you. And he's working on you. And so the psalmist said, when I think about who you are and what you do, he said you have carefully and skillfully, carefully and skillfully created me. He said, you are turning me from nothing to something. From nothing to something. So, you read verse 15, complete verse 15. You even formed every bone in my body. I talked about that. I'm talking about structure. When you created me in the what? 
in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, shaping me from nothing to something. Shaping me from nothing to something. So, what is God doing? He's transitioning you. Satan wants you to be nothing. Inconsequential. Useless. Unproductive. God wants you to be what? Something. Somebody. Satan wants you to be a non-entity. God wants you to be a celebrity. Satan wants you to die in penury. God wants you to live in prosperity. Satan likes it when your lamp is hidden. In fact, he likes it when your light is put out. But if he can't put out your light, he likes it when the light that is lit is kept under a bushel. That's why you see a Christian that has received Jesus as the light into their lives. 15 years later, they are not shining anywhere. Why? They are under a bushel. They are busy arguing over certain doctrines, over certain differences, over this, over that. At the end of the day, Christ is not revealed in or through their lives. And who would light a lamp and then hide it in an obscure place? Instead, it is placed where, what will happen? Everyone in the house can benefit from it. So, from it's like only benefiting from them. If somebody benefits from their lives, they will make that person pay ten times. They have talents. God is not benefiting from their talent. They are murmurers, complainers, and most often than none, these are the people that just make God look and God say, what kind of life is this? Genesis 6, the Bible says, God looked and he saw that the, the, the imagination of man's heart is constantly trending towards evil. So God said, I don't like this trend. That you are trending towards negativity and it broke his heart. When the Lord God saw the extent of human wickedness and that the trend and direction of men's life were only towards evil. That means whether you like it or not, if you are a man, the trend and direction of your life is towards evil. You have to be the one that consciously say my life will not turn towards evil. Why? You can reverse evil. So I can reverse evil. God doesn't like it when you look at your life trending in the wrong direction and you sit down and you feel helpless. Say, I'm not helpless. Say it louder, I'm not helpless. One more time, say, I'm not helpless. Say, God is helping me. Say, God is helping me. Say, God is helping me. God is supporting me. And I know that because he supports me, I will succeed. I will make it. I will succeed. Say loud, amen. amen. Men's lives were only towards evil. That means if you are a man or woman and you have life, there is already a pool. Something is pulling you to trend and follow the direction of evil. But what is God saying? 
I have come that you may have life. So, so the Lord is saying, I'm taking your light out from under that bushel and I'm putting it on a lampstand. And that's why you may think his joke is a fight between heaven and hell. Do you understand? When you turn towards evil. Now, sometimes you might be tempted to say, but I'm not doing anything wrong according to whose description. Because when you look wrong, it's not just when you do something. Do you understand? Wrong is not just when you do something. The scripture says wrong is to him that knoweth what to do and doeth it not. To him, it's a sin. So, wrong is not when you do something. So, if you know of an opportunity to do the right thing today, yet you refrain from doing it, you are guilty of what? Of sin. So what is wrong? Wrong is not just when you do something wrong. Wrong is when you fail to do something right. Now, here's the deeper part of it. Here he said, if you know what is right, but he said, in the time of ignorance, what if I don't know? Does that justify me? It's like you go to the court and you say, I don't know. Ignorance is not an excuse in the court of law. So he said, in the time of ignorance. So there was a time where men were ignorant of so many things and God overlooks. He said, but now God has commanded. In the past, God tolerated our ignorance of these things. But now the time of what? Can you help me read everybody? One, two, go. The time of what? Deception has what? Has passed away. He commands us all to repent and turn to God. In other words, uh, ignorance is not that you don't know it today. Ignorance is according to God that you fail to do what it takes to know what you don't know. Or you know your score record is constantly inconsistent. And that's what Satan does. He tells you it doesn't matter. Or he tells you it is too much. God is over demanding. God is too over-demanding. Only for you to try the path of Satan, then you will realize that no one is as tyrannic, demanding, wicked, evil as Satan. I know what is right, and I don't do it. I'm trending towards evil. Okay, at least I, 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 I didn't know. I didn't know. God said, sorry. The days of I didn't know passed already. You see that, right? So God is saying, what I expect from you now is to know. But God, how can I know? Seek. So God will hold any and everyone responsible. For their ignorance. Did you hear that? God will hold any and everyone responsible for their ignorance. Because if you sit in darkness, God constantly sends light and you keep ignoring the light, then God will hold you accountable. Because who are the people that God loves the most? God said, Let not the person that has money brag about how much money they have. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not what the rich glory in his riches. He said, but if any man will brag or glory in anything, go to verse 20. Yes, he said, no, the, 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 let, thus said the Lord, 
Jeremiah 9, 23. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man back in his wisdom, nor the mighty man in his might, nor the what? Rich man in his riches. So all these things, as good as they are, God said, they are the most useless foundation for, for bragging. I have money, and so I am wise, and so I am mighty, and so he said, let me give you ground for boasting legitimately. Let the, in this and what? In this and in this alone. That they what loud and clear. And that's it. He said, if you're going to boast, your boasting should be predicated salt on redemption and on the abundant supply of revelation. Because if you want to know, you will know. So God is saying, I don't want anyone to be bragging about the amount of money they have. It's good. Don't brag about how wise, how smart, how intelligent. He said, your that you know and understand. You know that understand that I am the Lord. I am the Lord of justice and of righteousness whose love is steadfast and that I love to be this way. It's a major transition. It's a major thing why you are trending towards evil. You are following the direction of evil, not knowing because you are expected to know. The funny thing is that the Bible, so now, if you look at this and you fast forward, you see that it said, your, no one lights a candle and keep under a bush. At least you will bring out that candle and put on a lampstand so that the people in that environment can benefit from that candle. Environment should benefit from your light, from the deposit of God in you, from something that God is doing in you. If you're transitioning from nothing to something, it will happen in vain. It will happen in practicality. That someone who is weak and looks at you and finds you. Now, there's somebody who's um, like stepfather passed away and some other person has told them, oh, my own mother, it's not stepmother, my mother passed away. I went to church and I preached. You don't know if that person is in heaven or in hell. So what's your business with the person that is dead? Let the dead bury their dead. Respectfully speaking, be dear, love the family, pray for them and tell them, I'm going to the house of God. Why? Because once there is evil in an environment, it's looking for the next victim. Yeah. Uh, that means that uh, 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 you, 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 you will be weak. Excuse me, honey. You have no idea. When you touch cable from your phone, it shocks you. But the effect of the shock is tingling. And what do you call it? Then? Tingling. Tingling. Touch the same cable plugged into high voltage power. Paramedics. That will never be your portion. That will never be your portion. It's both shocking. It's just that the shocking is in different levels. Anytime there's evil, it means there's concentrated darkness. The spirit of death hardly leaves that environment. That's why somebody can be killed in a gang fight and then they go to church to do burial during church. So, God said, I want to transition you from nothing to something. Please sit down. And the transitioning that I'm doing is that I need you to recognize the fact that if you are nothing, you are not a journey from abstract to concrete, from the invisible to the visible.
So Jesus said, if your light is under a bush, pull it out and put it on a lampstand. If no one pull out your lamp, pull it out. But then you know what? You what he said in the message translation. He said, God is not a secret to be kept. So you are carrying the light of God. That means make you something. And yet you are not willing to come out and talk about the God who is making you something. God is not a secret to be kept. We are going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. We are going public. So God is saying that. I, do you understand? Do you understand people of God? It is so important to know that God wants to be revealed. And what, how does he want to be revealed? Through you. Since the mind and direction of men is constantly trending towards evil. So what does God want? He looks for individuals that he say, look, I'm going to bring you out of the cocoon. I will bring you and position you. I'm turning, I'm taking you in the contrary direction. Do you understand? The biggest challenge with the transition is that it makes you look odd, weird. So God said, If we're going to get this right, I'm going to need something from you. And I'm going to give something to you. But in order for me to give you what I need to give you, I have to mean something to you. Did you hear that? I can't bring anything to you. And I can't bring anything out of you. I have to mean something to you. So, there is one major key that makes transition from nothing to something guaranteed. One major key. I give you the description of boldness already. But it's called a key of bold you to reverse the trend. When you look at Goliath, the normal thing that should happen is your heart should sink. Because this guy is so gigantic until a man who knows God shows up. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is not afraid to defy, to look down upon, to ignore God of heaven. They, they talked to some others standing there to verify the report. What will a man get for what? Killing this Philistine and ending what? This is insult to Israel. He asked them, Who is this hidden Philistine? Anyway, that is not that is allowed, was bold enough to stand up for God. Why? Everyone said they belong to God, but they were not in him. You can never succeed in the kingdom of God if you are a lover of your life. Every little wind that blows, you're gone. But willingness to stake your life for God requires that you love God. And to love him requires that you know him. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine or hidden Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy insult, look down upon, humiliate, report, I believe him. This is the living... Shabbat shalom. 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 Shabbat shalom.
In the name of Jesus. Please, three more minutes on the clock. Listen to these people of God. This is so important. The next six months, you are not in. Now, in six you are careful. So God is careful with how he lifts you. Because if he lifts to him, so he's careful. So, in, in his carefulness, in his carefulness, he will take you through a season. But you know what he will remove? He will remove cowardice. Cowardice. Hate and refuse to be a coward. Somebody once said, cowards die a thousand times before they are dead. Do you know that in the book of Revelation here, he said, but has for the one who doesn't have conviction their profession and their belief and to promote their belief and to publicize their belief and to use the cowardly the faithless the despicable the murderous the path lake of fire and sulfur which is the second death can you imagine that God is saying for being a coward your address is K we have many cowards in the body of Christ. That's why the worst form of terrorist is suicide bombers. They are ready to die with who they are trying to kill. No, no, they have deceived them. They told them that if they kill Christians, there are 70 virgins waiting for them. If there are 70 virgins, oh boy. The whole of the angels in heaven, they never tested it. When they came to the daughters of men, pew, 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 pew. But, oh! And they said, hey, the fallen earth, the atmosphere was already polluted. So in heaven, there is no marriage. In heaven, that's what I'm telling you. As important as marriage is, it's retort, is a lie, yo. I promise you, you can take that philosophy and say, check our fathers that talk about that. I am privileged. I've been in meeting right there with a people who has one of the best marriages on earth. And right there, he said, in my own head, not die because of what he did. He died because of what he didn't do. His pastors that had conspired to vote him out. And the, court, the case went to court. When they finished the case in court, he won. He came back. Papa Rico told him, they fired them. He said, where would they go to? Nice heart. Naive. Good father. Bad son. Something serious. And then, yeah, God. Blah, blah, blah. And then later on, he flipped something. Then I said, ah. I said, see why many fathers call sons, right? I said, now, when... When I wanted to, I was going to commit something to a certain church planting in a certain place. And it was going to cost us about 100 something, 100 something thousand dollars or something like that. And I, I said, okay, let's move. I was going to do that. I was going to use my own money to plant God's church. The Lord said, hold on. I said, ah, but you told me the guys. You told me this guy and this guy, they are going. And the Lord said, yes. He says, since you made that announcement and you took it in their heart. And I said, God, for you told me. God said, yes, I told you. He said, I'm telling you again. Something shifted in their hearts. And I said, God, what do I do? He said, hold on. Delay it. I will show you what shifted in their heart. This is one of the songs. Although me, I know that I will go all the way by the grace of God. My father, God told me, me, I'm here. I swear, I swear. And my father, I've been working with God very well. 28 years. More than 2,800 years. 
in terms of quality, impact, resourcefulness, and my work with God. So I mean, their own what ATS is only number announced. And when you prayed, and when you said, and when you started preparing, and now they are coming. Because when they are not in, I am there. Some of you can't walk in power. Why? Because you have not even tested power. Every little step Satan gives you, you will. But he still wants to walk in power. Later, that guy told me, he said, ah, he said, my father, I will need to resign. He said, in fact, I was trying to preach. God told me that if I don't resign, I will die. I said, shut up. God doesn't talk like that. He said, because God told me. But I said, you have not even been able to prove it. He said, God told him, you have been doing your own. Yet, in all of those 12 years, he said, I have not commanded them yet they spoke. Then he said, but even if they had spoken in my name, I would have honored them, but they did it in their name. But God will bring success. 12 years, he passed on God. I didn't call to pastor, I called to be a teacher. When he came into teaching, yet every church he passed out, Church escalated. Yet they gave you church and put so much money. You couldn't even bring the members to anything. I said, I said, so now, if I had put in all this money and sent you to that country, then you will go now and now call me and say that the Lord said that I have to resign. I said, me, Billy Fillmore, I will cost you, cost your family. When things shift in a person's heart, shocked how God will no longer be moving in their lives. Then you are wondering, how comes this person can no longer pray? How comes this person can no longer lead us? That's why I'm praying for you, child of God. If there's anything in your heart, reorder your life, reorder your heart, revive your heart, bring your heart to the right place, that place of tenderness, that place of humility, in the name of Jesus, shifted from God. And you are wondering, why has God... The place where the murderers are and the perverts will be the place where the cowards are and the faithless. It's serious, my brothers. It's serious, my sisters. It's serious, my sons. It's serious, my daughters. It's serious that after everything you are so that sorcerer you are binding from Lake Michigan, you have gone to pour anointing oil to break the head of sorcery. Now God said, if you are a coward, when you enter hell, the sorcerer will say, you are the one that stopped my business. <laughs> what are you doing here? That's it. And locked him up. He's now in jail for selling cigarettes. You arrested someone for selling cocaine and lock him up in jail and you ended up selling weed. You two, you are now arrested and you are in jail. I'm only for you. He has friends. He has group. So all the torture, you tortured him. Now you are here with him. Ay, ay. <laughs> they will beat you, beat you, chop your ear one ear after the other. None of you will find yourself in the lake of fire in the name of Jesus. Cowardice is it? Say boldness. Say boldness. Say boldness. It's boldness. Now, what is the secret to being bold? We're going to continue that by the grace of God. We are going to learn so many things. I want you to prepare your mind and your heart and set yourself. Cowardice. Why must I be bold? So many reasons. Four quick reasons why you must be bold. Boldness, number one, is required. Why? Because you live in a dark and a wicked world. Without boldness, this darkness will swallow you. Darkness will swallow you, will defeat you. 
a bold lie quiet to keep pressing without being choked out of life. Whether you know it or not, wickedness is wickedness. And when wickedness begins to manifest, you know what wickedness does? Wickedness will creep in to make sure you that is called to advertise the goodness of God is intimidated by wicked powers. I'm telling you, most people that are cowards today, they became coward because a spirit arrested their, bold, their, their boldness. And so the Bible said, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So what gave them that spirit of fear? Certain trauma. Let me tell you, in psychology, they talk about trauma. Traumas are real. Trauma will open a door to fear that paralyzes a person for the rest of his life. Both strong soldiers go to war. When they come back from war, they say they have what? what? Like it literally torments them. There was one guy that says, every time he closes, he just keeps him body, body, body everywhere. So the wickedness of this world amplifies evil, trouble. You go through one challenge, the spirit of wickedness amplifies it. And then before you realize it, it begins to intimidate you. And the reason many people don't succeed is because of the memories of past failure. I pray for you. Any and every presence of trauma or any traumatic incident that has opened the door into darkness in your life. Marriage fails, so you are afraid of marrying. Uh, your father did something wrong, now you are afraid of men. Your mother did something wrong, you are afraid of women. Or your boss, or something wrong happened when you were a child. Or even your own personal mistake. And now it has left and opened doors for evil spirits that has intimidated you. The wicked spirit has taken advantage of that intimidating causing you to be a coward today by the power of God I demand and command the reversal of that trauma the reversal of cowardice the reversal of the fear of failure in the name of Jesus you are afraid of making progress because when you tried something went wrong no more I said no more. You will enjoy your life and you will succeed in life. Number three, why do I need boldness? Because of your call to greatness. Your call to greatness. Your call to greatness. There's no one who is called to greatness that will not confront fearful, threatening things in life. Do you understand? Greatness can be fearful. Greatness. But boldness will enable you to overthrow fear. And you enjoy, you enter into your greatness. The moment you become great, everything is looking for what to pull you down. But will you be afraid? Will you say because you don't want someone to pull you down, you will not go up? No. You must go up. You will be wealthy. You will be rich. You will succeed. And lastly, why do I need boldness? I need boldness to fulfill the end time mandate. I'm called to be an ambassador for Christ. I'm called to stream the glory of God. I'm called to win souls. I'm called to tread on serpents and scorpions. I'm called to lay hands on the sick. If you lay hands on one sick and they don't recover, lay hands on the second sick. If the second one doesn't recover, lay hands on the third one. Keep laying hands until you see Jesus begin to glorify himself. You need it because of what the end time mandate. You are called to be an ambassador for Christ. And no ambassador can fulfill their ambassadorial assignment if they are cowards. Life is intimidating. Life is full of twists and turns. It's possible that you go through one twist and you, hey, 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 and you check out of life. Many people 
They say cowards die a thousand times before they are dead. So many people have stopped living life because one thing went wrong. Nobody told them it's going to be okay. No one told them it's going to be all right. No one told them that if you stand up for destiny, things will try to shut you down. But I'm saying to you, child of God, that God wants to make you succeed. God wants you to become successful, but he doesn't want you to be a coward. And the Bible says, Acts 4 verse 13, they arrested Peter. They arrested or John. And they looked at this man. They knew that they didn't have the regular education that they expected. And the council members were what? You are leaving this place to go and surprise people. Amen. It's about to be surprised by you. You need boldness to confront what intimidated you. Confronting darkness, confronting failure, confronting negative circles in your family, confronting negative patterns, as I said, patterns are stronger than demons. You need boldness. Peter was confronted before the death of Jesus by a little girl and Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. It took a chicken to remind Peter that he was a servant of God. But then afterwards, Peter cried and Peter said, not again, not again. And when Jesus restored Peter, he said, wait until you receive power. Wait until the Holy Spirit comes to you and the Holy Ghost is the source of boldness. The most primary source of our boldness is not your expertise. It's not your stubborn head. It's not your degrees. It's not your ignorance. It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can give you the kind of boldness that nothing in this world can give to you. And that's what he wants you to have. Boldness and courage. Peter waited and the Holy Ghost came on them. And after the Holy Spirit came, the Bible says they stepped out and people started calling them names. They were drunkards. Peter opened his mouth and boldly proclaimed. The same Peter who denied Christ. What did he do? He reversed evil. I'm here to say to you, God is transitioning you. He's transitioning you from nothing to something. Meaning what? It's time for you to take advantage of the covenant and of God and reverse contradictions in negative circumstances that has intimidated me and has arrested me. I'm reversing you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Say, make me bold. Peter knew it's time to reverse things. It's time to change things. In my transitioning, I can't carry my cowardice into my next level. I can't carry my stupidity into my next level. I can't carry my laziness into my next level. I can't carry my tiredness and tiredness into my next level. I don't know what that next level will require, but I do know that whatever made me nothing is not going to cross with me to the next level of my life. I am leaving my nothingness on this side. I am going to the next phase. And it takes boldness for nothing to claim I'm going to be something. Look at somebody and say watch me I'm going to be something. I said tell somebody I'm going to be something. I know you probably think you're tired and you don't have my I'm going to be somebody. God is transitioning me from nothing to something. From nobody to somebody. From a non-entity to a celebrity. I'm going to be somebody. I promise you, my anointing will change your life. My calling will change your life. My destiny will change your life. God has been training me. I've been having time with the Holy Ghost. I've spent time in the presence of Jesus. I'm about to shock my world. I'm about to astonish my world. Somebody shout yes! The same Peter that denied him suddenly 
they stood before the council member, members, and they were astonished as they witnessed the bold. Excuse me. A few weeks ago, he was a coward. The Holy Ghost came a few weeks later. He became the one shocking, surprising the council members. Some of you, your boldness. See, the subtopic of the message that I put here, you know, when I put there, is the bold life. And I wrote down six elements of a bold life. Some of you, I'm using one of the elements to speak to you. Is that failure has bamboozled you. Bamboozled you. You tried it, you tried here. And it seems like it keeps knocking your head down. I'm not talking about 2025 or 2026. 2024. After this first quarter, even you will be pinching yourself to know that this is you because you are going to be boldly successful. Some of you, the boldness you have will take you from believing God for $10,000 credit card loan 100,000. Suddenly something will tell you. Go for 1 million. Go for 2 million. Go for 10 million. And before you know it, it will be like night and day to you. Like, like, you say, excuse me, I started first quarter with red in my account. I am finishing second quarter with excessive wealth in my account. What happened? What happened? What the element of a bold life is financial overflow. Say financial overflow. Say financial overflow. Say financial overflow. It's difficult for the timid to have wealth. And God said cowards can't have wealth either. Because you will be apologizing for taking advantage of opportunities. But God will use your money to astonish your world. Some of you, they have not approved you for so many things, but you'll be shocked. The council members will be astonished because financially speaking, by the mercies of God. Now, listen, I'm saying this. Somebody, or the Lord is telling you, this is your matching order for the next quarter. In fact, for the rest of this year, God said, this is your matching order. Divine astonishment. Your matching order is that I'm going to astonish the council members. Who are the council members, the one that want to cancel you? Who are the council members, the one that thought you won't amount to much? Who are the council members, the one that undermined your divine training? When you were spending time with Jesus, they called you a hulum. They said you didn't have anything doing. That's why you go to church and spend all day in church. Don't you know that people like us, millionaires and billionaires, we have to be doing this and that until they begin to become sick and tortured and tormented by foul spirits from the Euphrates River and they are calling you. They say we know we are billionaires but can you come and lay hands on us? Can you come and lay hands on me? I'm telling you child of God a day is coming within this second quarter that as Jesus walks on you and you become one with him, you cross to the next quarter. <laughs> as you cross to the next quarter, everyone that thought you are a foolish person for investing time in the presence of Jesus will beg you, come dip your finger in water and quench my thirst. If you are one such persons lift your hands and say, I will astonish my world. Astonish the people that rejected you. Astonish the people that undermined you. Astonish the system that looked down on you. Astonish the system that insulted you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will astonish the council members. You will astonish the council members. 
He said, as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John. Everybody help me read the conclusion loud and clear. Especially when they discovered that they were just nothing. No, 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 you missed it. They were just nothing. When they look at you, they know you are nothing. What they don't know is the transition that is happening. <laughs> I'm spending time with Jesus. And all you can see is a nothing. And yes, it is God's wisdom. Because most times God can hide something in nothing. So that when Satan looks and looks and he said, this is nothing. And so Satan is confused. Because if the prince of this world knew, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. When they look at me, they see nothing. When they looked at Rahab, they saw nothing. But a prostitute whose house was on a wall. But when they looked at her in the eyes of the future later, they saw that she became the mother of the Messiah. All her previous customers as we are shocked to find out that uh -uh, this woman is not the mother of the Messiah. When they look at you, they see nothing. Wait, because God has hidden something in you, but God is transitioning you because he wants you to know him. He said they saw, they knew that they discovered that they were just ordinary men. They were nothing. Who had never had religious training. Everybody help me read one, two, go. Jump to your feet, everyone, and read one, two, go. Somebody say, I'm transitioning from nothing to something. God is carefully, skillfully turning me from nothing to something I believe in shout yes he said then they began to understand they don't understand why you come to church the way you do they don't understand why David Philmon take time to train people even some of the people I'm training they don't understand because in their mind I'm wasting their time not knowing that transition is very dangerous if if a, an eagle begins to transition. If an eaglet in the in, if an egg begins to transition from that yolk into what an eaglet and does not complete the process, the eaglet dies. There are eaglets that have fully formed but died in the eggs. Why? Because when it was time for them to break the eggs with their beak, with their pig, their beak, they failed to do that because when they are in that incubation mood, they are supposed to have intelligence and somehow their mind is growing. They are supposed to know that it's up to you to come out of this shell. So the day you feel that like you are strong enough, you crack the shell and you come out. But if the chicken, if the eaglet is lazy, it will not be able to crack the shell. I have seen many pictures of eggs, eagles' eggs that remain eggs. And when they cracked it open, there were babies, eaglets in them. They never became eaglets. How much more becoming eagles? Because time is required. In perfection in the transition. Ask any scientist. Ask any researcher. Ask anyone in any industry. Everything that happens fast is called what? GMO. Genetically modified. So, the one thing we know GMOs transmit is cancer. So, you eat chicken. When we say eat African chicken, you say it's too hard. You eat American chicken that just two days ago, or let's not say two days, maybe like one week, it was egg, it was a chick. And one week later, it's ready for food. 
Now they are doing another one that happens in like three, four days. They call them featherless chicken. Featherless chicken. So they don't want the feather to slow the growth. From egg to meat in your pot. Uh -uh. That's death in the pot. But God is able to give speed. Go and check everyone that God gave speed. Jesus finished his ministry in three and a half years. Say speed. Okay, I have a question for you. If that speed, what happened to the former 30 years? 30 years! God worked on him. God trained him. God built him. So three and a half years, he's been dead. The same happened to Joseph. He had had dream. 13 years, 18 years, 13 years later, he was on the throne. So hear me. Everything God began in you, allow him to finish it. Cooperate with God. Flow with him. You might not have received certain trainings, but God's presence is a trainer. They began to understand the effect Jesus has had, had on them simply by spending time with him. It is impossible for you to go out of this service and be the same. Peter at that time didn't know that he had become bold. Because the transition happened and it was natural to him. But the people that thought he would never become anything suddenly were shocked. There are people that believe in you. There are people that don't believe in you. But I can surprise you. If hundred people believe in your greatness out of the hundred people. Will you take this from me if I tell you? Out of the hundred people that believe in your greatness, only ten truly believe in it. Don't be naive. Don't deceive yourself. The ninety, they say we believe just to encourage you. Wait until you go to trial. They will turn around and say, I've always done it. We knew it. They are too arrogant. They are showing off. They are too saucy. They are too pessimistic. They are, no, no, uh, what do you call this? Uh, 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 ostentatious. They are too narcissistic. They will call you a man of names. These are not the people that didn't believe in you. At least the ones that didn't believe in you, you know they didn't believe in you. These are the people that say, go, we are your cheerleader. My mother said, he has so many pastors that said, we believe in you. We are this and that. So he wanted to buy his church. He sent a letter to about a thousand pastors. Can you please make a donation to our ministry? One thousand. Can you send us to someone? Please, can you send us? Now when he sent that, shock and shock and shock. He said, Less than part of a thousand, maybe less than 20, 30 pastors or 20 people sent back. I need to find out the, that exact story. Send back a letter. I mean, send back the thing with $200, 300 Tell them that we manifest your greatness. They will say, excuse me, I'm busy. As for the parable Jesus gave, he said with one consent every one of them began to make excuse don't be naive don't you ever think that people that say believe in you they all believe in you if you are counting on those that believe in you you will never become somebody you have to trust God and you have to personally let that time you spend with God Walk its way into your life until when you stand before the council 
they can look and say the presence of God has made a difference and has given you boldness. And for the record, boldness doesn't mean that you are able to talk and talk loud. So take that. That you are eloquent doesn't mean you are bold. That you are handsome or beautiful doesn't mean you are bold. That you know how to maneuver your way doesn't mean you are bold. Because you can be as bold as a crocodile. And it takes one tiny L electric fish to kill you. Because the boldness is when they release dark powers. And the dark power backfires. And they know you are not empty. The presence of Jesus has changed your life. Lift your two hands during the communion. I want you to ask God. It is your opportunity to reverse anything that contradicts. What is it that contradicts? What is it that needs to be reversed in your life? I'm going to lift your voice and speak. I speak the name of Jesus. I reverse any and everything that is slowing down my transition negatively affecting my transition. God is carefully, skillfully transitioning me from nothing to something. You're going to pray. Lift up your hands, everybody. I want to pray this prayer. We're going to have about one minute to pray this prayer. And I want this to come from a bold place. Come from a bold place. Knowing that Jesus is in your heart. If you're a child of God, I want you to boldly cry out to God. And one of the reasons why you need boldness is to be able to win in the place of prayer. Because the Bible says we have to come boldly to the throne of grace. We are going to come boldly. Within this one minute, 60 seconds, 60 seconds, I want you to pray out loud and clear and settle your own matter. And, 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 and when you are settling your own personal matter, just understand that God takes his time to test so many things in your life. To stretch so many things in your life. And then to settle so many things in your life. And this is the day I believe he's settling so many things in your life. Lift up your two hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. By your mercies. Can you raise your two hands up? I know the time is well invested. But please trust me in this. Trust me in this. You have to do it right. You have to get it right. To get it right. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. By your mercies. By your mercies. By your power. By your power. And authority. And authority. I ask. I ask. Nikosa Brigitte. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Whatever it is that is in your life that keeps interfering with the process and the perfection of that divine process. I pray that the blood of Jesus removes such today. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes for some of you is because of you. God extends certain things, especially in a service like this. Why? Because he wants to change certain things. But every time he gets to a time like this, something interferes with it. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against any form of interference. Amen. Against any and every form of interference. Amen. By the power in the blood of Jesus, nothing will interfere with this process. Amen. Nothing will interfere with this process. Amen. Nothing will interfere with this process. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Stretch your hands towards the altar. Two hands. You are going to cry out to God. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your mercies, by your, mercies, by your, power, by your power, and authority, and authority I, ask I ask that any and 
every contradiction in my life that has trended in the wrong direction. Let your power reverse such now. If you are praying, if you have the microphone, use it. If you cannot use it, please give it to somebody else. If you hold the microphone, I want to hear your voice in it. Please trust me. I know that the time is fast spent. I know and I respect your time. But I promise you, this is your deliverance. Yes, this Lord. is your help. This is your, yes, it may not make sense to you. Just trust the process. Yes, Just trust God yes, and trust the process. Yes, you have done so many, many, many things in your life with your life. You have spent so many, many time in careless places yes. with things that don't matter. Yes. If you are with your boyfriend or girlfriend, it will look as if time doesn't exist. Yes. And at the end, they don't add anything of such value to you. You are with the Lord. You must know that things like this matters to God. Amen. God is counting it. God is looking. Don't let any spirit lie to you that God is not looking. God is watching. Are you following me? Yes, Lord. You are able to reverse things, not just for you, but for your family. Yes. For your children. Amen. The glory of your children will not diminish. Amen. I'm praying for somebody. Your children will not go up and come down. Amen. Powers that bring people back and bring people down is shattered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, name of Jesus. By, your by your power and authority, and authority. I, reverse I reverse any and every. Any Contradiction, Contradiction. Negative, trends negative trends in my life, in my, life. In my family, in my family. Whatever, whatever has locked me down, locked me down. Has, nothing. has nothing. I command such be shattered in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, perfect the transition from nothing to something. Perfect my transition from nothing. To something. to something. Perfect my transition. Perfect my transition. From, nothing From nothing to something. In the name of Jesus, my Father, I confirm today that by boldness or with your boldness, I transition into becoming all that you have come to become. In the name of Jesus, I reverse contradictions. I cancel contradiction. I enhance destiny acceleration. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth for 60 seconds and pray. Let the power of the Holy Ghost rapid of the Rapito que le ve capata, barato que le que te que te que le que te capata, sabre que te que le capia taba, barapo te que le que te pre que te yada. Let the power of the Holy Ghost perfect this transition. Let it be clear. That I have been with Jesus. Let every investment of Jesus in my life become visible. God is not a secret to be kept. I am the public display of a true God, a living God. In the name of Jesus. Kind of prayer. Daddy Jew 
who is already 80 something, after all his success, he's still praying this kind of prayer. Some of us have not even reached anywhere. And we can't pray this kind of prayer because we have revelation. Because we have example, two example. No child of yours should be married and come back home because the marriage failed. You didn't hear that, though. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. None of you should be married and come back to your father's house because your marriage failed. Again, no. No child of yours leave her house. They must go further, go higher and higher. Are you following me? If you have to live with any of your children, it should be in the house they built for you. I'm telling you, bad times are stronger than demons. That's why if you don't you sacrifice to break patterns, it becomes the same thing. Are you following me? Whatever sponsors non-achievement, restricted achievement, you are going to gain access to. In this life, there's no restricted area for you. Uh, no, no, no. You are the one that if a crocodile come, you will electrocute them. If you bite them, you kill them. They bite you, they die. That means every Access to the topmost top in life must be granted to you. You can only reverse these things in the place of prayer. You can only change these things in the place of prayer. Don't watch yourself not shine as a star. Don't watch things calamity control your productivity. Stretch your hands towards this covenant. You are opening your mouth to cry out to God. Say, My Father, in the name of Jesus, by your mercies, as I partake of the Holy communion I declare that any and every form of captivity be over be reversed every name of Jesus with this communion I destroy reverse glory I cancel you I move forward I move higher I move faster I move stronger I boldly declare my finances are affected. My money is affected positively by this communion. I boldly declare that my health, my wealth, my relationships is affected powerfully, positively by this covenant. Any and everyone connected to me have no choice but to excel because of the glory of God upon my life as I transition from nothing to something everyone in my environment everyone in my network will transition from nothing to something I boldly declare that by reason of this covenant this communion today I transition effectively into something financially open your mouth and pray lift your voices and pray Your health is springing forth. 
your favor is limitless in the name of Jesus your sins are forgiven and from today if out of a thousand less than ten are truly are truly or truly believe in you I am number one in that ten so I proclaim, I prophesy, and declare that by the power of Jesus Christ, whatever you lay your hands upon to do will prosper. You transition from nothing to something. From nobody to somebody. It is happening this second quarter. The very council that thought to cancel you will look at you the next quarter and you will know the tremendous impact. They will understand the tremendous impact that being with Jesus has done or has had on you. You go forth in peace. You return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout Kadosh. Kadosh. Lift your two hands and give thanks to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, shout aloud, Amen. Please bring out your offerings. Bring out your tithes. Quickly. Everyone bring out that tight. So remember the instruction I gave you to be able to pray in tongues between 11.55 to at least, you know, 12.15, right? You're going to do that. I'm going to receive the offering now. We close the service. So if you're here, you want to do it here, you can do it. You can do it while you're going. But one thing you will not do is that within that period, especially so because we're still here, maybe like two minutes to 12, you are busy talking to people. So I'm going to rush now, close now, and then you come for the communion. So if you want to talk to anybody, you have to talk quickly. But once it's that two minutes to 12, once I say, everybody, take your time to pray, you have to take that time. Now, those of you that have to go and you need to go take a ride or go with somebody, feel free. You can be tonguing and take, talking to them. You can be communicating in tongues. Okay? So, again, right? You will not be in error if you, you are talking and dry, tonguing and driving. You okay? So you can stay. You don't have to stay. I didn't plan on holding you till now. Yet I kept having this, have this strong burden within my spirit that something has to break. Do you understand? And somebody has to reverse some things. Do you understand? And I am convinced that many things have been reversed. Come forward with your tight. If you have your tight, quickly come forward now. If you have your tithes, come forward. Now the rest of you package your offerings. Bring that offering out and let's uh, give to the Lord. Bring that offering out and let's give to the Lord. Bring that offering out. We have a couple of wonderful good news. You have, bring your offering out and your tithes too. Amen. Our very own Pastor Peculiar has been selected to be honored as a recipient of the 2024 Chancellor's Student Service Award. This is very, very serious matter. This is serious. This is serious. This is serious. Congratulations. We will celebrate that on Sunday. Please, I want every one of you to notice something. 
This Sunday, we're going to have quick services. The first service, 8 a.m., will be over by uh, 9, uh, say 9.50 or 9.55. The second service starts at 10 and will be over by 12, 12, 12, 15. Because the evening service is explosive. So please, all our locations, everybody will be here in the evening of Sunday. You come with your honey. It's our honey service. It's very, very important. So 5 p.m. is the evening service. We come here. It's also going to be 5 to 7. So you are expected to be here hungry and very determined. So you bring your family, bring your children. It's very, very, very important and very prophetic. So make sure that you do that and the Lord will honor you and reward you abundantly in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Shout a loud amen. amen. I have one more good news. We'll show you. Um, have you finished packaging your offering? Everybody package your offering. Is it packaged? Properly packaged? Very, very packaged? Are you sure? All right. So today at 10, 18 p.m. <laughs> 10, 18 p.m. Look at that smiling, happy baby. What a blessing. What a blessing. Glory to Jesus. What a blessing. Said before service is over, this baby must come. I'm excited. Congratulations to the reeds. I am now officially a grandpa. Grandpa, grandpa, grandpa. This is serious. <laughs> I'm excited. God is amazing. May God give you joy. May God prosper you in Jesus' name. Let's celebrate Mother Caroline. Amen. All right, stand to your feet, everyone, with your offerings quickly. Lift it up. You have your tights lifted up. Your first fruit, whatever it is, come closer here. So lift up your seat. Now I'm going to pray generally over the seat. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege given to me to honor you with my seat. I release this seat and I believe that by your mercies and your power, my life will enjoy perfect transition. I will have evidences of the fact that you transitioned me from nothing to something in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout amen. amen. Now for the purpose of the Lord bless the work of your hands. The Lord increase you, prosper and multiply you in Jesus mighty name. Congratulations. May God take you higher. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Said the Lord bless you. Thank you for the crusade. God bless every one of you. The Lord bless the work of your hands. The Lord bless the work of your hands. The Lord bless you, increase you. The crusade team, please, if you want to stand with us with the crusade, I think the QR code is coming tomorrow. So, God bless you. So, make sure that you stand and be with us. Well, it is my joy to officially welcome you into the very hour that you're supposed to be speaking in tongues. So surely, God's goodness and mercies shall follow him, us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Shout a resounding amen. Now, we are going to be playing um, that song. Um, my emperor of the universe, my soul of the same. Play it and we'll be praying in tongues. You can come, get your communion and you're going. You drop off your offering, get your communion and you're going. God bless you. If this is your first time watching with us, we love you. 
God bless you. Sir, we love you. Thank you for coming. I'm seeing you for the first time. Yes, sir. So you come and take the communion as you come now. Now let's start praying in the spirit. Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Amen. Cass. Huh? Elder Kara. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you online viewers. Go in peace. The Lord bless and prosper you. Enjoy his favor in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Please take this communion with absolute consciousness of a transition. Absolute consciousness of a transition. This is spiritual. I eat you. I'm spiritual. Something is moving me. There's nothing God put in my care that we go down. Everything